Oh, hey! Didn't quite see you here. Welcome to the newest episode of Lotus Lab. Well, today is gonna be... A spreadsheet? A spreadsheet? Yeah, it's a spreadsheet. What do you mean? I don't like Excel, but I do. And we're gonna make a compendium about agents. Thank you, Timmy, for taking part in the conversation. So yes, we're gonna be talking about a spreadsheet today. Uh, because I created something that looks like this. This is a spreadsheet where I will be talking about the roles and the um, tasks that agents have in game. I think there's a huge misconception in the game and Riot's set fault, actually. You know, it's like, uh, oh, Lothar, but you're a Riot shell. What are you? What are you doing? We don't believe you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. You guys always say that when I'm trying to be like constructive and not blaming the developer, but when they do something incorrectly, I will call it out. And I do think that Riot made a mistake by making the classes being just described with one word. Like a dualist, initiator, controller, and sentinel. Sage is not a sentinel. Like uh, Yoru is not a dualist, you know? Like uh, there's this uh, Viper is not a controller, exactly like the, the way that, that auto controllers are, you know? And I, this is the reason why I create created this spreadsheet because I uh, I would like to help the players that are coming into the community and maybe they either don't spend that much time figuring out stuff about the game and, uh, you know, trying to, like, be very, um, let's say, min-maxi when it comes to approach um, to the game. They don't want to learn every single thing about the agents, and, may, and this can, can help them, you know? Or someone is coming to the game completely fresh. He doesn't know how, what... He has no idea what's going on with the meta game and what are the agents uh, supposed to do. And if someone can send them the spreadsheet, I hope this will help them, you know? So... Um, this is going to be like a few parts, I would say, videos. Like We're going to divide this by classes as well. So this, this video, this one here that we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about duelists first. Then second video, we are about initiators and controllers and sentinels. So, and I'm going to go through all the rows, explain what I, what I mean with those. I'm going to also link you this spreadsheet to share if you want to. And of course, this spreadsheet is going to get updated with more info because we're gonna be talking about uh patches we're gonna be talking about changes that are gonna come in the future as well and of course i'm gonna add more um let's say uh content to this file with like maps and agent uh, selections and so on so there's gonna be more stuff coming in uh into this document so we're gonna build like a small compendium uh about the agents in this spreadsheet overall so now uh let's jump in you know, like first, of course, row is just the agent's name and the class that is being used by Riot, right? So that's the reason why we even created this. Now, the third row is complexity. Why, why am I starting with complexity? Don't think that this is a uh, measurement of, um, let's say, a, a, a measurement of success or measurement of, um, of the level of power or, or strength overall. Complexity is actually not a good thing, at least not in my eyes. The agents with the most complexity, I don't think they are quote unquote good for the game and good for the community. Why? Well, the thing is that most of the players are casual, right? They don't play a lot. They don't, um, they, try, they just try to enjoy the game, even if they play like competitive and they do play a lot. Most of the players don't want to learn. You know, and complex agent require mastery. And if you release an agent that requires mastery, typically not many of the players that will be playing the game will pick them up. That's also the reason why Reyna is the most picked agent in 2022 in every game mode. And it makes me mad, as you can hear. Right? So um, the complexity is just showcases you how much time and theory you would have to sacrifice to play this agent, in my eyes at least, to a, satisfa a satisfactory level, you know? And when you can think like, oh, I played this agent well, and this agent has a lot of options and I understand them. And this is like, I'm, like the higher the complexity um, of an agent is, the more backhanded compliment is it, it is, you know, at the same time. So as you can see, Reyna is at one out of 10. Like she has almost no complexity. You know, there's very basic utility that you have. You just shoot heads, 
press E to, to dismiss in 90% of the cases, and that's about it, you know? And then we have Yoru, who is on the other spectrum of dualists, because he's not a dualist also, and he has a 10 complexity. Because every single piece of utility that you have can be used in plethora of ways. The flashes can be used as, as supportive flashes or entry flashes. They can be one ways with the flashes. They can be lineups with the TP. They can be like uh, improvised TPs and so on. So there's so much stuff that you can do with the utility. It just makes the character complex. And it's a backhanded compliment because Yoru is at least might not be the least peaked agent now because Harbo got implemented. <laughs> and he and Harbo, by the way, is 9 out of 10, right? But Yoru is so complicated that most people don't play him well, which creates the opinion that he's a troll agent, but it's actually really good, but it's just complicated to play, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, the other agents just wanted to show you that Phoenix is like one of the most basic agents that you can pick up and play. He's not that complicated when it comes to duelists. He's the least complicated apart from Reyna, but Reyna is just barbaric brutality like incarnate you know so not really surprised here right so uh, i'm putting you on the most complicated from the duelists right now the least complicated and that jet neon require a bit of mastery when it comes to the movement specifically on neon she's not as let's say straightforward as you think she would be because you have to be insanely confident in your movement skills to master a neon and most of the utility that you have requires precision not only precision, but also quick thinking, which makes her complicated to play because not screwing up the stunts is actually complicated. There's, if you're not an inexperienced Neon, the stunts will probably deal more harm to your team than to the opponents, right? Because they bounce around uh, and you will not predict how they bounce. You can stun yourself, stun teammates by accident and so on. So she's actually pretty complicated to play. Now, okay, complexity. We have sp sp we did speak about the duelists a little bit when it comes to the complexity. But now we're going to jump into the roles of those duelists, right? So we have three roles um, for each agent. I divided that between the primary role, secondary role, and tertiary role. Right, the primary role is something that I, I want to coin like terms for each agent that should be a um, substitute for the class. So instead of calling Reyna a duelist, she should be called a support rifler. Because even though each duelist is called duelist, they have vastly different approach to the game. That's why this primary role is so defined. At least, you know, that tried to make it more defined. We have three, spray, uh, three space creators, right? Raise Neon Jet, because they all share the mobility utility. We have the dash from ne Jet, we have the uh, slide from Neon, we have the satchels from Raise. They all can create space by moving faster than other agents, and they can be, because of that, first on site, right? Reyna doesn't have that. So none of those agents should be called the same. They shouldn't be dualists. Dualist doesn't mean much, right? But those, that primary role will tell you how different are those agents. That's why Phoenix and Arena actually have a lot in common. They're both riflers, right? They're both like more about creating space on foot, right? The Reyna has those blinds, um, Phoenix has flashes up close, and, ha and has an ability to zone. That's another thing. There are three duelists that have the zoning ability. By zoning, I mean if you played MOBA or any um, strategy games, uh, you should know that zoning is using whatever you have in your arsenal, or is that utility or hardware or like whatever equipment you have, to uh, uh, essentially gain an advantage in a space on the map or, or the level or whatever is, is being designed um, to your advantage by using that, that those spells or utility or whatever, right? So for example, for Neon, that's the stun. For Phoenix, that's the molly. Uh, for uh, Race, that's the satchel. Sorry, that's the paint shells. That's the uh, boom bot. Because they all zone out. Uh, uh, sorry, not zone out, but like create a bit of space or certainty or push out players out of specific zones that you target with the utility. So that's also very important to understand that if, if it's your main role to, zone, to, to do zoning, you should be using that utility when you're attacking a site as a duelist, because that's your role. 
you expected to use this utility. So when you're so when you're playing Jet, you're expected to play as a space creator. On attack, you're expected to dash onto site, check the corners, you know, and create the chaos. Right? When you're neon, you're expected to slide onto site, but also use the stuns to create zoning, right? When you play Phoenix, you're expected to go first with the flashes, but also use your molly to like check one corner, right? So you also zone. And then you have Yoru, who is completely not fitting to the duelists that we have here because he's so flexible. Like his role in my eyes should not be duelist, it should be infiltrator. Why infiltrator, you ask? Well, he has the ability to be everywhere on the map. He can be lurking in one moment and then he can be back to the team. He can be attacking the site as a first player and he can just be instantly on the backside with the TP, right? So his role is so different from the other agents. We could call him also a space creator, but it's not exactly the same because I perceive space creation as when a player also disrupts the opponent at the same time and that's why there's the, there's the secondary role that comes in with the duelist here that is very important the crosshair disruptor the crosshair disruption is very important and that's why i um mostly tied it up with the space creation because when a jet imagine a jet dashing onto site when someone is watching an entrance or let's say defender on ascent on a side if a jet dashes in to jenny then the player that is Defending that site has to look at the jet. But if the Yoru just TP somewhere backside, he might not even be visible or not even like, you know, taken into consideration because he doesn't do the movement. There's no connection from point A to B. And that's why the cross dis disruption will probably not work as well as on jet. That's why I do think that space creator belongs only jet, neon, and race, while your rule is essentially the infiltrator, right? And um, what is very important as well is to understand that there's a difference between crosshair disruption and angle denial. Angle denial is something um, that I would like to um, explain in a way where one of your utility kits, kits has an ability to push away a player from holding an angle, right? So essentially... Uh, that's gonna be a stun, that's gonna be a flash, that's gonna be a, um, oh, uh, as well a molly, right? But it's like the secondary role, which has typically a connection with the zoning ability, right? So that's the angle denier. And as you can see, Reyna essentially doesn't even have a third role. Her role is just being a, 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 a rifler that goes in later after someone else created the space, and she just kind of supports with her flashes and then denies the trade because she got an assist and just dismisses. And that's it. The crosshair disruptor is essentially her blind. That's about it, right? And the tertiary role for many ag agents here is something that I just want to mention when it comes to like, oh, this is another small thing that is and uh, that this agent can do. So for Reyna, I don't really have one. <laughs> I mean, complexity one out of ten, right? But Jet is an off-angle character because you can check a change verticality, but also has the dash defensively, right? Uh, Neon, fast rotator, because of the ability to sprint, she's able to be the flex player between sides on both attack and defense. Uh, Phoenix as an execute support because of the ability to zone, right, essentially. So even though uh, you might not be first on site, but you should as a Phoenix, you might still help with the wall, with the with the molly and so on. And then on your own race, I put in proactive info because there are two pieces of kit, uh, pieces of the kit that helps in getting proactive informations. For example, Yoru has the clown or clown if you watch the stream and know. Um, essentially, when you use the clone in a proactive way, you're able to get informations where one of the players is standing because when the clone is being shot you see where the clone is going to be looking at and you know exactly where the opponent is. The same goes for the boombot, but the opponent doesn't, is not even required to shoot at it, right? So uh, that's the proactive info. Now, the next one, the next category uh, that I have here is attack order. Attack order is very important for duelists and it's, it's one of the most important things actually to understand because as you can see, 
there are four agents that I think are belonging in the first entry category. That's Jet, Neon, Phoenix, and Race. If you are playing one of those agents on attack, you are expected to be the first on site because of the ability to create space and because of the, um, let's say, ability also to be unpredictable and your kit is supporting the way that you should create space on site, right? So you're when you're playing one of those one of those agents, you're expected to be first on site. For Phoenix, is maybe not the space creation, but the flashes. Uh, essentially, you cannot use them if someone is in front of you, right? You can use them for someone else. You're using them for yourself for yourself, and also you have the best ultimate in the game to essentially be first on site without fear, right? But when you play Reyna, I don't think you you should be first on site because she doesn't excel at that. Those agents are excelling at being first on site because of the unpredictability and also the explosiveness of the kit. While Reyna is essentially, because of that, I don't think she should be named Duelist, right? That's why I think that the space creator zoning rifler is so important to understand. Just because Reyna is called Duelist, she shouldn't be expected to be first on site. She should be going after someone else is going for the first entry and then she goes in with him, she supports with the blind and goes in and tries to get the trade and dismiss to denial the trade that would be happening on her, right? And then also Yoru is, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to attack order, he can do whatever because of the, let's say, complexity aspect of his kit. He can be a first entry, he can use his clown and his flash to be essentially the first one on site alongside the TP or not, right? But he can also just be a support with uh, using his flashes from a longer range and use them for uh, specific lineups to be uh, very proactive for other players in his team. And also he can be a lurker, right? So uh, he can be whatever. He can be, because of that, he can be expected to do any kind of job in the team. And uh, in the flash type, I just wanted to do to like kind of um, mention wh wh what's the difference between the flashes, if a character has flashes, as you can see, support blinds. Uh, and I know I started writing this before Reyna got changed, but I still do think that her blinds, even though they are faster and she can use them more for herself, they are still more effective as support blinds for your teammates than for yourself. And uh, and yeah, and then uh, Phoenix entry flashes. There's no flexibility here, and Yoru has flexible flashes, right? Then we talk about lurking. And when it comes to duelists, you shouldn't be lurking as a duelist. But if you have to, right? Then I wanted to give like a little bit of a of a uh, let's say explanation. I are you like are you expected to do well as a lurker or not? If you're a race. There's absolutely zero part of your kits that are going to be helpful for you as a lurker. If you're playing Jet, there's a little bit of your kit that can help you avoid like a Killjoy trap, um, Chamber trap, right? You can go through um, uh, through Cypher traps as well with your with your app draft and so on. So in general, there's some kits, part of the kit that should work as a lurker. But at the same time, if you're playing Jet, you shouldn't be lurking. You're expected to play as a first entry, right? And remember, lurking is on attack. On defense, there are no lurkers. On defense, you have flanking. That's a very important part of uh, nomenclature that people should be using to understand each other better. Because on attack, the lurker has a different role than on defense, a flanker, right? And, and uh, that's about it. So, uh, yeah, Neon Phoenix, small ability when it comes to lurking because of the avoidance of uh, traps with some of that part of the kit to denial the vision, right? And now we go to uh, prefer preferable defensive roles. As you can see, I didn't... When, when there's an agent that doesn't have one um, marked, that means that those agents just don't have any preferences, you know? But if if there's a... If there's a part of the kit of that agent um, that supports a specific type of a role, I wanted to mention it. So for Neon, that's a rotator. Essentially, on defense, it's like a, um, the other side of the spectrum from anchoring, right? Like you're, if you're anchoring, you're expected to be on your side 
till the other side is being committed to right if your opponents are committing to uh, to 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 the other side of the map and they're already attacking the side they breach the gates then you're starting to rotate because otherwise you're an anchor on site but the rotator role is someone who is jumping in between sides where the support is needed in that moment so when there's like the first tempo attack well neon is gonna just run through the map to help that side right yoru in this case can be both he has good utility to be an anchor because he has a lot of flashes and and the, like utility that can stop a push right and also has the ability to rotate faster because the tp can be used to be in between sides then uh secondary defense role in the case of duelist that's essentially just are you able to off angle hold or not in other agents uh, there's long range and medium support that we're gonna explain we're gonna talk about initiators but when it comes to duelists that's essentially like you should be holding an off angle if you're playing this duelist because you're going to be using the um the part of the kit that supports that right so when you're playing jet uh when you're playing neon race sorry when it comes to jet and race you want to be a little bit more vertical when it comes to neon uh you're be you're able to play in a little bit of an off angle and just instantly sprint to reposition right uh, but you have to be very smart about it that's why also the complexity of neon is much higher uh than other agents and um then we have uh yoru who is an off angle holder when his dp is up and reina who is an off angle holder because she has a dismiss so yeah you hit head you dismiss oh complicated right and then we're going to talk about defensive sniping ability why did i not put also attacking sniping ability because i think that in valorant when you compare it to csgo using the sniper on attack is not preferable the way the maps are being built the way that the operator works and affects your movement is not really preferred to have on a duelist on attack and also and i'm not sure if you guys remember but i was ranting a lot when i was like first months at vct when i was the analyst i was very vocal about how i absolutely despise players while playing jet operator on attack the only player who was like let's say uh had a had a had an exemption from that was cned he was on the, he was the only player on the planet that did make that work because he was he was the first entry of an operator it was crazy but every other jet was essentially baiting the, the team the entire team because she wasn't first entry on site she wasn't dashing in right so in most cases, for an attack sniper, I would just put 0 out of 10, because as a duelist, you, you shouldn't be using that. You can, but it's not the best. So I'm just not going to put it there, and I just wanted to make a, make a note about that. And now, when it comes to defensive sniping, sniping ability, I would just like to show, oh, is it like preferable to play sniper on this agent? You can play sniper on any agent, by the way. It doesn't matter. You can be whoever you want in-game. You can still play an operator. Don't misunderstand me, right? It's just... The scale from 0 to 10 shows you if your agent is supporting that weapon, right? So the highest is, of course, Jet from the older duelist because she's able to dash out and also have the smokes to reposition. Um, the updraft helps to survive and so on. So her kit supports playing with a sniper. Thank God the Jet dash was nerfed because she would have a 10 out of 10 otherwise, right? Then the next one in line is Yoru because of the two TPs. He's able to reposition, he's able to dodge the bullet after he misses, and so on, right? And uh, then we have Neon, uh, sorry, Rays, because of the ability also to be in unpredictable spots, and Satchels can be used as a very bad dash, and a, uh, like a defensive dash, if you just double press your key for Satchel very fast, it explodes in front of your face and you're just sliding away, right? Uh, then we have Neon, who, whose sprint can be used as an escape mechanism, but is not reliable. But remember, with head change, that you are not required to um, to have any momentum to slide, makes it a little bit better, because you can hold an angle with an operator, and essentially, it's kind of worse jet dash, because it's not instant, but you're not required to move before. 
which makes it a little bit better. And maybe actually because of that, I should be changing that to 5 out of 10 and not 4 out of 10 when I think about it. You know, and then Reyna, uh, well, she needs to hit the head shot. Then you dismiss complexity. And uh, Phoenix, I don't think any part of your kit actually helps you as an operator player. So that's about it. And now the last one, the last category when it comes to explanation of why this, um, why this spreadsheet exists is the or priority. The red one is the attack priority. The greenish one is the defensive priority, right? So how to, how to understand this? Essentially, let's imagine that the, this scale is created in a vacuum, right? So or priority requires a lot of context, but let's assume the context is reset. That means we just started the game, we have five agents in the team, every single one of the agents has no orbs, no kills, no deaths, and there's an orb in front of you. Which one of the agents gets the orb first? That's what this orb priority shows you. So when it comes to the duelist, obviously, on attack, you want to give the orb to Phoenix, because Phoenix has the ability to initiate an attack. His first entry, his ultimate, is only six orb, and it will give you a lot of value. That's why you prefer to give it to Phoenix on attack from every single agent. Like, there's no other agent. Like, we're talking about duelists in this video, but when you compare it to other agents that are in this game, I don't think there's more important ultimate on attack than Phoenix if you have Phoenix in your team. And of course, it's going to be different when, for example, your Sova gets 4k on a pistol round and... Uh, and a plant and a death, and he's suddenly 6 out of 8, then it makes sense to give him an orb on round 2, even though there's a phoenix in your team, right? So remember, context matters, but this orb priority is from a ground zero, when everyone is at the same stage, right? Um, and uh, yeah, then I, I do think that Jet Neon and uh, Ray's have a similar ultimates to some degree, but not exactly. So let me explain. I consider Jet and Neon economical advantages. Jet and Neon can use the ultimates um, to drop another gun to a teammate. Because of that, they have a semi-high um, uh, orb priority because they can build up uh, the, the, the economical state of the team, which helps out a bit, right? Or a lot in some cases. Um, and uh, they are just very capable weapons. When it comes to Neon, it's limited by time, so you have to be like more confident. For Jet, there's no restrictions, and it's also the best gun in the game, by the way, in my eyes. Um, that's why I'm putting them at 5 out of 10. Raze is similar to some degree, but in most rounds, you're just gonna use your ultimate as a zoning tool, right? And then you still need a weapon. And also, it's an 8 orb. So I really don't think it requires a lot of, a lot of priority. And why is Yoru 6 out of 10? Because in my eyes... Um, in my eyes, the Yoru ultimate is a fantastic initiation tool that you can use on attack, kind of like a Phoenix ult, but with the ability to shoot at the same time, but you're getting a lot of info. You're getting, it's like a server drone with a flash equipped, and if you, if you play your Stingo or Shorty very well, well, then you can also get a kill for free, right? So, I would say there's a high, semi-high priority on the Yoru ultimate. Why Reyna 0 out of 10? Do I need to explain? I don't think I need to explain, right? Timmy, what do you think? No, brother. Uh, brother. Reina. Crap. I agree, Timmy. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Anyway. Then all priority on defense. When it comes to the ultimates, everything that I just said applies to the same degree, but the priority on those orb on defense for the duelist is lower because they don't give you as much of an advantage to hold a site, essentially. Right? And building economy is a little bit less important than having brutal force available in your ults when you compare it to the other agents. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember that the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that in this game, you pick your agent to your role that you like and not the other way around. You know? So, yeah, thank you for watching. See you guys in the next episode. We're going to be talking about the initiators from this spreadsheet.